So typically, I mean, look at it, looking at just an interventional pain specialist, typically it's an anesthesiologist who's done a fellowship in interventional pain management. Typically they can perform over 100 different type of procedures. You know, you can do um, um, a, a variety of different things, a lot more than just an epidural steroid injection. I mean, just in the lumbar spine, there are 20 different ways to do an epidural steroid injection. So, you know, you're trained in a lot of different things. You typically, typically, like you said, are going to be a diagnostician first. They're going to help you find out where is this pain coming from. Then they're going to hopefully come up with a multidisciplinary and a multidimensional treatment modality looking at a variety of different options, whether it's interventional or non-interventional, and then provide those options for you, hopefully after they've diagnosed you, which means that they have to have a fundamental understanding of the different types of pain so they can put you in the right category and then figure out what's, you know, what are our next steps. Strong fund of knowledge is, is absolutely important. And then hopefully they're practicing with some integrity. And hopefully they're putting your outcome first and not their pocketbook first. Obviously everyone needs to get paid, right? And, you know, everyone has to have, make a living. But they have to put you know, the, the best thing forward, uh, best options forward first. Now here's the reality of pain management. And here's, here's really why we, we are having a little bit of a problem with, um, with pain management in America. This is why it's costing America $635 billion a year and why 116 million patients in America have some type of chronic pain. Number one, of all the pain doctors out there, all the people who are trying to help, the people who say, hey, listen, I'm a pain doctor, I really want to help you, maybe they do. Maybe they all do. Let's just assume they all do. Over 90% of them have absolutely no accredited formal training in pain management, and that's a scary figure. Okay. Secondly, many of those pain doctors, many of those board certifications, there are board certifications out there that you could literally buy, okay? So you don't have to spend a year, two years, three years, four years, five years training. You can literally buy them. You take a test, you pass, you call yourself board certified in pain management. Um, and that's, that's kind of sad. No other specialty that I know of in medicine allows that. In the past, interventional pain management had um, training programs that were incredibly variable. So, you know, so let's say someone actually has done a, a program. Um, they may not have been trained correctly. There's a big program right here in Chicago where they don't even learn how to do some of the advanced procedures that we have, which is kind of scary because you'll go and see them not knowing that this person has never even been trained in some of the advanced things that we do. Um, there are many unaccredited programs. Literally, there are pain doctors who get their qualifications from someone's office. They go to someone's office to say, hey, listen, work for me for free, and I'll give you a certificate at the end saying you finished a fellowship. This happens actually more fr frequently than the accredited fellowships, which is really scary. How do you know that? You don't. Because they'll say, I am board certified and fellowship trained. And where was their fellowship? At some random doctor's office who probably isn't doing it correctly either. That's very scary. Uh, in addition, there are many trained and board certified pain physicians who have variable pain practices. Why? Because the specialty wasn't even recognized until 2002. Medicare didn't even recognize as a specialty in 2002. So all these training programs were just treating God knows what by people who were never even trained. So that, that's also another problem. So, you know, you, you wonder why we don't have a good definition of pain management or who a pain doctor is or why we teach variable quality. This is why we see that. And no other specialty in medicine has that variability. Interventional pain options, again, just sort of going over this real quickly. Uh, different types of epidural steroid injections, facet and medial branch blocks, radiofrequency joint blocks, nerve blocks, ganglion blocks, intrathecal pumps, spinal cord stimulators, percutaneous decompressions. Um, obviously, I haven't talked about ketamine infusions yet, and there's a reason for that. When do you go to a pain doctor? When do you go to a surgeon? Well, typically a surgical referral is someone for a patient, you know, maybe they can't move, maybe something is broken, maybe they're losing function in their legs, maybe losing feeling, lack of bowel and bladder control, or maybe they've tried other pain management options uh, and, and all of them have failed and, and, and their only option is surgery. When you have a pain management referral, well, a patient that experiences chronic pain. Quite frankly, I think the pain management referral should be first. Typically what happens is someone who has pain, maybe they'll go to the ER, maybe they'll go to a primary care doctor first, and then that primary care doctor will refer them to the surgeon. And then after everything has failed, then they go to the pain doctor a year, two years, three years later, when in some cases it's, it's sometimes too late. What should happen is they should actually be going to a legitimate pain doctor first, getting the diagnosis first, and then doing the conservative options first. Recent trauma, for example, chronic pain in the neck, leg, uh, back, CRPS, chronic uh, problems that involve neuropathic pain conditions. RSD, fibromyalgia, whiplash injuries, uh, failed back surgery syndrome, post laminectomy syndrome. Those are all things that a pain management referral uh, is appropriate for. 